From trading expeditions abroad and an abundant supply of gold from the mines of Nubia, Egypt under Amenhotep III enjoyed a time of wealth and great prosperity. The Egyptians have the leisure to start getting involved in a lot of theological speculation, uh, which leads to what the Egyptians considered a disaster. The disaster came in 1353 BC and took the form of a strangely shaped man who some believe was a heretic. Pharaoh Amenhotep III had been grooming his oldest son for the throne when the young prince died. This left his younger brother, Amenhotep IV, to succeed their father. He had been studying religious matters, however, not affairs of state. As a result, his reign was a revolutionary departure from the long entrenched traditions of Egyptian kingship. Scholars still struggle to understand this pharaoh. Was he a fanatic or a great reformer, a visionary or a madman? Whatever the answers, he was without question the strangest of all the pharaohs. For over 1,700 years, the Egypt of the pharaohs had worshiped many gods. Amenhotep IV wanted Egypt to follow only one god, the sun god called Aten. As if to complete the transformation of Egyptian religion, the pharaoh changed his name from Amenhotep to Akhenaten, which meant servant of the sun god Aten. It was the first time in history that mankind worshipped a single god. This radical change rocked Egypt to the very clay of its ancient foundations. Akhenaten's reign was one of the great crisis points of Egyptian history. It was a period during which the old beliefs were overturned, the capital was moved, and the temples and cults were essentially shut down. This can't have been easy for the population. The massive temple complex of Karnak at the ancient capital of Thebes remains the largest religious site in the world. It was here in 1350 BC that Akhenaten was crowned pharaoh in a traditional ceremony. But then tradition ended, great changes were on the horizon, they began with the pharaoh Akhenaten's expansion and beautification of the Temple of the Sun at Karnak. Most notably, he added a new symbol to the temple. This curious disk was called the Aten. It was designed to symbolize his new god of the sun. In year five of his rule, Akhenaten proclaimed the Aten Egypt's one and only god. Akhenaten has occasionally been called history's first monotheist in that he did away, or at least no longer funded, the worship of all the other gods in favor of only one, the Aten, or the physical disk of the sun. His choice for queen was also unconventional. Her name was Nefertiti. She came from a non-royal bloodline, but appeared to hold a very prominent position in her husband's reign. One of the most magnificent pieces of sculpture ever unearthed in Egypt is a limestone bust of Akhenaten's legendary queen. Nefertiti appears to have been an exquisite queen, but when we examine images of Akhenaten, we discover that his appearance was as bizarre as his ideas. Early on, many representations of Akhenaten caused a great deal of confusion among archaeologists. Because he was often portrayed with wide hips, a protruding belly, and breasts, he was sometimes mistaken for a woman who may have been masquerading as a man. It seems possible. Years earlier, Queen Hatshepsut 
was often portrayed as a male. She even went as far as to wear the false beard reserved for kings, perhaps to appear more like a pharaoh. Akhenaten's physique has sometimes been attributed to an illness called Froelich syndrome, which causes the body to distribute fat in ways that are considered typically female. One of the side effects of the disease is that you are sterile, and we do know that Akhenaten and Nefertiti had uh, several daughters, and there is some speculation, obviously, that uh, Tutankhamun was a son of his as well. Uh, so if uh, that's the case, then the idea of this one type of disease probably is not likely. But Akhenaten's mummy has never been found. All attempts to diagnose his abnormal appearance have been based solely on art and statues. Other scholarly opinions about Akhenaten's startling appearance look not to medicine for explanation, but to the symbolism tied to his new religion that was based on the Aten sun god. Akhenaten's new religion was a radical departure for Egypt, but so strong was his conviction that he was willing to defy and eliminate the powerful religious institutions which represented the beliefs of virtually the entire population. He shut down the temples of the god Amun and declared Thebes would no longer be the foremost city of Egypt. A new capital city dedicated solely to his religion would be built. The pharaoh called his new city Akhetaten, which meant the horizon of the sun god. At the center of the new capital was the great temple. It was there that the pharaoh Akhenaten cultivated his new religion, devoted to the adoration of the sun god he called Aten. Before Akhenaten's religious reformation, ordinary people worshipped outside the temples while the king, priests, and the elite of society performed their rites inside mysterious secret chambers. Akhenaten changed all that. He wanted the people to worship along with their pharaoh, out in the open under the sun's life-giving rays. It is believed that three ceremonies a day were held at the great Aten temple. The first was at dawn, as the sun rose over the cliffs east of the city. A second ceremony was held at noon, when the sun was directly overhead. Then, at sunset, the devoted would recite a hymn to the sun, which Akhenaten himself had composed. It is not known how successful Akhenaten was in converting his subjects to belief in the Aten. It is possible his new religion was simply a ploy to strengthen his image as a pharaoh. By eliminating other gods, Akhenaten knew he would appear more like a god himself. The king was removing the intermediaries, the clutter of all the intermediate priests, the uh, very bulky and cumbersome pantheon with hundreds of different deities and so forth with a simpler form of the religion. But it was mainly involved with the idea of the king creating a more direct support for the idea of him as a living divinity here on the earth. Akhenaten did not conduct this worship alone. There is evidence that his queen Nefertiti led the sunset ceremony each day. Nefertiti was a very important woman we're not quite sure whether it was Akhenaten who, who granted her some of the importance that she had, uh, or whether she just decided to take it. There are some scholars who felt all along that Nefertiti was behind the religious revolution even more than her husband. Another powerful woman of this era was Akhenaten's mother. Her name was Queen T. She had migrated with her son to his new city to act as his regent. Because Akhenaten was absorbed with matters of religion, it appears Queen T may have been responsible for affairs of state. If so, 
there remains a puzzling archive of clay tablets that were sent to the pharaoh Akhenaten. They came from outposts of the Egyptian empire in Syria. The tablets reported that the outposts were under attack and failing. These writings, known as the Armana letters, pleaded for supplies to be sent and promised continued loyalty in exchange. It is likely earlier pharaohs would have responded with soldiers and strategy. In this case, however, it seems Queen T may have been the one who ignored these pleas for help. Art from this period also underwent a radical change. Everywhere the pharaoh's image appeared, he was shown to be under the protection of the sun's rays. While previous pharaohs were depicted as being physically perfect, Akhenaten instructed the royal artisans to picture him more realistically. Instead of looking like a warrior, his statues portrayed him as feminine. And he was seen being tender with his children or in poses with Nefertiti that would have seemed far too intimate just a few years before. Akhenaten and Nefertiti ruled together for 12 years, and then, curiously, there is no record of the queen after that. The disappearance of Nefertiti is one of the great mysteries of Akhenaten's reign. After being such an integral part of her husband's kingship, almost a co-regent, suddenly there are no more mentions or depictions of her to be found. The reasons for this are still in debate. Some believe she may have died during childbirth. At one time, it was believed she was indiscreet in some way and Akhenaten disposed of her. Still, others suggest that she lived on past Akhenaten's interest in the sun. Nefertiti could have, in fact, been the more devout of the two and cloistered herself away to remain loyal to the cult of the Aten. But the, the general, the basic situation seems to be that she actually died. And there is evidence that she was buried in the royal tomb at Amarna, in the, what is called the royal wadi, beyond the confines of the royal city. In any case, Akhenaten did not have to suffer from a lack of companionship. He appointed a new male co-ruler. His name was Smenkara and some believe he may have been the pharaoh's younger brother. It is possible that he married one or more of his daughters. If he did that, that would not actually be unusual for a pharaoh. But in the case of uh, Akhenaten, we also have a suggestion uh, that he had a homosexual relationship with uh, his co-ruler, Smenkara, towards the end of his uh, reign. Uh, which would make uh, Akhenaten one of the first bisexual people, presumably, since he also has children from Nefertiti. His unorthodox appearance and descent from the old religion caused history to label him a heretic. Still, there is little evidence that the pharaoh Akhenaten's new sun cult ever really took hold among ordinary people. Excavations of the ancient city of Akhetaten have revealed that even before his death, many of the inhabitants kept idols of the old gods in their homes. Were they ignoring the new religion, or did they sense the inevitable? Akhenaten's religion was failing. Akhenaten died in 1334 BC, during the 17th year of his reign, and with him died his religion based on the worship of the sun disk. Soon after, there was a tremendous backlash against his religion and heresy, which led to the destruction of anything that bore his name. It is believed, however, that in order to protect his remains, Akhenaten's followers removed his body from its tomb at Amarna. It was an Egyptian custom to uh, gather together and to try to hide and conceal and protect for, for, for the future. Uh, the remains of important pharaohs and burials. 
And I think there's a strong possibility that that's what did happen and it remains to be discovered for archaeologists in the future.